So in the last video, we talked about the theory of how do you know whether something will precipitate or not. And let's go ahead and actually go ahead and do a calculation here. And I'm going to draw a line chart here. And in the center, I'm going to mark it with KSP. And this line chart is going to be the value of QSP that we have. Okay, If QSP is bigger than KSP, so we'll be at this point here over to the right on the line, that is unstable. So the solution will try and move in a way to try and reduce QSP. Remember, the reaction is essentially the solid is dissolving and forming ions. So if we need to make Q smaller, we need to have fewer ions. And so we are going to go ahead and move the reaction backwards to form a solid, and that's called precipitation. So if Q is bigger than K, it will shift all the way to the left, and it will form a precipitate. Okay, now conversely, if Q is smaller than K, okay, it's not at equilibrium, so maybe you start off here. And so if you're not at equilibrium right, you would like to reach equilibrium by increasing the value of Q. Now, how do you increase the value of Q? You have to form more ions, but if you don't have more ions to form, right? I mean, you might want more money, but where's it going to come from? You got to do something to get it. So it simply means that the solution is capable of dissolving more ions. So it is an unsaturated solution. So it is unsaturated. So you can add more. I can sometimes even spell unsaturated, but it's not going to dissolve unless you add some more. So it's capable of dissolving some more. All right, so let's have a look at a concrete nice example. And uh, let's say we mix two solutions together. We're going to mix some calcium nitrate. Okay, got to get the formula right. Um, with some sodium fluoride. And uh, we're going to mix them together. And we might want to do a dilution calculation at some point, right? If we know the original concentrations and the original volumes upon mixing, we can solve for the final concentration. But let's just keep it simple. And uh, we'll mix them together. And at the end of the day, the calcium concentration will be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. And the fluoride concentration upon mixing will be 2 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. All right, so the question is, what about the other ions? What about the nitrate ion? And what about the sodium ion? Well, we've seen already that those ions are incredibly soluble. There are very few compounds that will not dissolve to extremely high levels that contain nitrate and sodium. So we can pretty much learn to ignore those ions. So we can focus on the ones that we know we'll have problems with. In fact, the calcium and the fluoride can form calcium fluoride. Calcium fluoride, we've seen already, has a KSP that's quite small, which tells us it doesn't dissolve very much at all. KSP is 1.46 times 10 to the minus 10. We've written that now about five or six times, I'm sorry. So how do we know if it's going to precipitate or not? We're going to calculate QSP. So first of all, what is the KSP reaction? Well, it is the solid forming ions. So this takes us back to writing out the ions and ionic compounds in general chemistry one. So QSP then would be the concentration of calcium at that point in time times the concentration of fluoride at that point in time squared. So those are the actual concentrations, not equilibrium. We're given them in the problem above. So uh, it's two and a half times 10 to the minus three. Remember, for these equilibrium constants and reaction quotients, we don't put the units in. It's just a raw number. Fluoride is 2 times 10 to the minus 3, but we got to square it. We multiply that together, we get 1.0 times 10 to the minus 8. So you might want to pause the video and ask, what does that mean? What will the solution do? Okay, if you've unpaused it, well, Q is bigger than K. It's about 100 times bigger. So that means that it's got to decrease to reach equilibrium. How does it decrease? It has to lower the concentration of ions. How does it lower the concentration of ions? By combining them and forming that insoluble precipitate. So this solution, when you mixed it together, would form a precipitate. So notice the original solutions were perfectly dissolved. They were aqueous. But when they combine, those ions have such a high concentration that they will no longer dissolve. They will have to precipitate. In fact, that's one of the reasons we pay pharmacists big bucks, because when you take medication, those ions can concentrate up in your bodily fluids, in your bladder, let's say, in your kidneys. And if they reach critical concentrations, they can exceed the solubility constant, and they can form precipitates, which are extremely painful. All right, good job, folks.